The Weird and Wonderful Echidna by Mike Jung Australia is home to some of the most unique animals on Earth. Kangaroos and koalas live there. A giant bird called the emu does too. Of all the creatures that live in Australia, the echidna is one of the strangest. This small creature makes its home in Australia and also on the island of New Guinea. The echidna is also known by its common name, the spiny anteater. The name describes two of the echidna's amazing traits. All echidnas have spines. Some eat ants. But those are only two of the traits of this strange and wonderful creature. If you met an echidna, you might have a hard time figuring out what kind of animal it is. To begin with, the echidna has a beak. But it doesn't have feathers and it doesn't fly, so it's not a bird. The echidna lays soft eggs like a snake does. But the echidna is not a reptile. The echidna is a mammal. The echidna belongs to a group of mammals known as monotremes. They are the only mammals on Earth that lay eggs. There are only two kinds of monotremes. One is the echidna and the other is the platypus. Monotremes have lived on Earth longer than any other mammals. Several adaptations have helped them to thrive. The echidna's beak is a rare feature among mammals. It's also a fabulously adapted tool for finding food. Echidnas live in forested areas and feed on insects, worms and other tiny creatures. An echidna's beak is long and pointy. However, the beak doesn't have two halves that open, like a bird's beak. Instead, the echidna uses its beak as a digging tool. It pokes and prods to find its prey. The echidna's beak is tough. In fact, it's strong enough to break open a rotten log or dig into soil in search of a tasty meal. The most amazing thing about the echidna's beak is something you can't see. The beak has sensors inside it. The sensors detect electrical signals given off by living creatures. That means an echidna can locate prey without seeing hearing or touching it. It's a kind of mammal superpower. Short-billed echidna. The one species of short-beaked echidna lives throughout Australia and on New Guinea. Long-billed echidna. The three species of long-beaked echidna are found exclusively on the island of New Guinea. An echidna's mouth is small, and it has no teeth. The echidna uses its beak to crush a worm or insect into tiny pieces. Then it takes the pieces into its mouth and swallows them. Scientists classify echidnas according to beak length. There are short-beaked echidnas and long-beaked echidnas. The one species of short-beaked echidna lives throughout Australia and on New Guinea. The three species of long-beaked echidna are found exclusively on the island of New Guinea. If you were to see an echidna in person, the first thing you might notice is its coat of spines. The spines are short and hollow. They are made of keratin, the same material that makes up your hair and fingernails. An echidna's spines are like a coat of armour. They protect the echidna from predators such as the dingo, a kind of wild dog. When a predator approaches, an echidna rolls itself up into a ball. The ball appears to be nothing but spines. Predators usually think twice before chomping down. In addition, the echidna's spines play another important role. They serve as camouflage to help the animal hide from predators. The spines are coloured with sections of white, black and brown. The spines blend well with the surrounding colours of rocks, soil and dead leaves. Like all other mammals, the echidna also has fur, 
though some echidnas are furrier than others. The amount of fur depends upon where the echidnas live. Echidnas occupy a range of habitats, from the chillier regions of Australia to warmer, drier places in New Guinea. The ones in colder areas tend to have more fur. Those in warmer climates have less. Can you find me? The colours of an echidna's fur and spines help it blend into its surroundings. Ouch! The strong, sharp spines of an echidna help keep it safe from predators. If you think the echidna's beak and spines are incredible, wait until you see its tongue. The echidna's tongue is a simply amazing tool, and it's perfectly adapted to capture the kinds of prey the echidna needs. There are two different kinds of echidna tongues. That's because different kinds of echidnas eat different kinds of food. One type of echidna has a long, sticky tongue. The other has a short tongue that is covered with hooks. It may seem backward, but the short-beaked echidna has a long, sticky tongue. The tongue is extremely flexible. It's great for grabbing ants, termites, and other tiny prey. The short-beaked echidna is expert at flicking its tongue into the nooks and crannies where those animals live. The long-beaked echidna doesn't eat ants at all. In fact, worms are its only prey, but its tongue is perfectly adapted for worm catching. The long-beaked echidna probes the soil with its beak. When it finds a worm, it sticks out its tongue. The tiny hooks on the tongue hook into the earthworm. Then the echidna pulls its tongue back into its mouth, and the earthworm becomes lunch. When it comes to predators, the echidna has another secret weapon, its claws. When an echidna is startled or attacked, it hides by doing something no other mammal in the world can do. It digs itself straight down into the ground. How does the echidna pull off this trick? The claws play a big role. Tough and heavy, they can move a lot of dirt in a short amount of time. Other adaptations help the claws do their job. First of all, the echidna has a strong skeleton. Second, the echidna might be small, but it's incredibly muscular. Those muscles can pull hard to dig very fast. When a predator approaches, the claws, skeleton, and muscles of the echidna go to work. In seconds, the small mammal can burrow almost completely into the earth. Once the echidna is dug in, its camouflage spines make it very hard to see. And because the only part that's exposed is spines, many predators will pass it by. What's for dinner? The echidna has many features, like its long tongue, that are adapted to meet its needs. What's the echidna's most amazing adaptation? Some people might think it is the beak. Others might vote for the spines or the echidna's digging ability. But the echidna has another amazing adaptation that you can't see. It's a special layer of muscle that wraps around the echidna's whole body. This muscle layer makes the echidna's body very strong. And, and even more important, it allows the echidna to change its shape. It can roll itself up into a ball, or it can flatten itself to the thickness of a spiny pancake. That extreme flexibility comes in handy. The echidna can squish itself flat to squeeze into a hiding spot when a predator lurks. It can turn itself into a ball of spines to protect itself from a hungry dingo. The echidna has one more unique feature. The echidna's body temperature is about 85 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit. In case you are wondering, your own body temperature is a toasty 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That means the echidna has a lower body temperature than any other mammal. Scientists think that a cool body temperature might help the echidna live longer. 
Surprisingly, echidnas live as long as 45 years in the wild. Other small mammals don't live nearly as long. When they need to, echidnas can turn down their body temperature even lower than normal. When they do this, all their body functions, such as breathing, heart rate and digestion, slow down too. This state is called torpor, and it's a bit like hibernation. When in torpor, the echidna uses less energy, so it needs less food. This is useful during the winter, when prey is harder to find. It's also helpful during times of crisis, such as when a forest fire occurs. Scientists think this trait is one reason that the echidna has managed to survive, but it's just one of the adaptations that makes the tiny, spiny echidna one of the most amazing creatures on Earth. Amazing adaptations. Flat as a pancake. The echidna's unusual muscles allow it to change shape. Hollow logs can provide a short-beaked echidna both food and shelter. Music